I'm very happy to be with you this evening. And I thought I will speak a little bit about uh, Lord Trump's pastimes, the particular aspect of his pastime. But first we will read verse from Bhagavad Gita, very important verse, which Prabhupada quoted very often. Jan Makarma Chame Divyam, Evam Yoveti Tatvataha, Tiaktvadeham Punar Janma, Naitima Meti Sorjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, takes his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode or Juna, purported by his divine grace, Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The Lord's descent from his transcendental abode is already explained in the sixth verse. One who can understand the truth of the appearance of the personality of Godhead is already liberated from material bondage, and therefore he returns to the kingdom of God immediately after quitting his present material body. Such liberation of the living entity from material bondage is not at all easy. The impersonalists and yogis attain liberation after, only after much trouble and many, many births. Even then, the liberation they achieve, merging into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti of the Lord, is only partial, and therefore, uh, and there is a risk, there is the risk of returning to this material world. But the devotee, simply by understanding the transcendental nature of the body and activities of the Lord, attain the abode of the Lord after ending this body and does not run risk of returning to this material world. In the Brahma Samhita it is stated that the Lord has many, many forms and incarnations. Advaita Machyuta Manadim Anantarupam. Although there are many transcendental forms of the Lord, there is still one and the same Supreme Personality of Godhead. One has to understand this fact with conviction, although it is incomprehensible to mundane scholars and empiric philosophers. As stated in the Vedas, Purusha Bodhini Upanishad, Eko Deva Nitya Lila Nurakta Bhakta Vyapi Hridyantaratma. The supreme the one supreme personality of Godhead is eternally engaged in many, many transcendental forms in relationship with his unalloyed devotees. This Vedic version is confirmed in this verse of the Gita personally by the Lord. One who accepts this truth of the strength, on the strength of the, uh, of the authority of the Vedas and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and who does not waste time in philosophical speculation, attains the highest perfectional stage of liberation. Simply by accepting this truth on faith, one can without a doubt attain liberation. The Vedic version, Tattvama Si, is actually applied in this case. Anyone who understands Lord Krishna to be the Supreme Lord, and who, or who says to the Lord, you are the same Supreme Brahman, the personality of Godhead, is certainly liberated instantly, and consequently, his entrance into the transcendental association of the Lord is guaranteed. In other words, such a faithful devotee of the Lord attains perfection, and this is confirmed by the following Vedic assertion. Tameva viditvati mrityu mati nanyah pantha vidyate yanaya. One can attain the perfect stage of liberation from birth and death simply by knowing the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and there is no other way to achieve this perfection. Upanishad. 
that there is no alternative means that anyone who does not understand Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is surely in the mode of ignorance and consequently he will not attain salvation simply, so to speak, by licking the outer surface of the bottle of honey or by interpreting the Bhagavad Gita according to mundane scholarship. Such empiric philosophers may assume very important roles in the material world, but they are not necessarily eligible for liberation. Such puffed-up mundane scholars have to wait for the causeless mercy of the devotee of the Lord. One should therefore cultivate Krishna consciousness with faith and knowledge, and in this way attain perfection. Сила Прабхупада Кича. Джан Макарма Чаме Дивьям, и вам я вети татватат, як тва дехам пунар джан мана и тима мэти сорджуна. Он, who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities, does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, or джуна. Намаличный падая Кришна Христая Бутале, Шримате Бхакти Виданта Свамини Тинамини, Намасте Сарасвати Деве Горавани Прачарине, Нервишеша Шуньявади Пасчатя Дешатарине, Ванча Калпа Тарубеща Крипа Синдубе Вача, Патитанам Паване Био Вайшнаве Био Намон Маха, Джай Шри Кришна Чайтанья Прабунита Нанда, Shri Advaita Gadathara Sivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Ajana Lambita Bujokna Kavadata Sankirtanaika Pitaro Kamalai Taksha Vishwam Baro Dvijavaro Yugadharma Pala Vande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Vataro Yantah Pravishya Mama Vachim Mam Prasuptam Sanji Ivaya Takila Shakti Darak Swadamna Anyam Shahasta Charana Shravana Tvagadi Prananamo Bhagavate Purushayatu <coughs> so tomorrow and the day after tomorrow we're celebrating Kram Navani. And this verse is directly connected with uh, such events. Lord Himself comes to this world for a specific reason. And the main reason is to liberate those people uh, who are inclined to him. It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, Anugrahayam Bhaktanam Manusham uh, Tanum Ashrita. Uh, what is it? Tadrisa. Mm. Srutva. <laughs> uh, Ah. Anyway. Uh, the, the Lord comes, Anugrahaya Bhaktanam, to manifest the mercy to the devotees. And uh, he performs his leelas in this world. And whoever hears about these leelas inevitably uh, should become inclined towards him. The main reason of him coming to this world is to turn our hearts towards him. Now our hearts are more or less conquered over by the material nature. And uh, because our hearts are completely overwhelmed by material nature, it's difficult to turn it to him. And the only way to change our heart, to basically turn our heart 180 degrees, turn away from this attraction towards material nature, uh, to understand or to feel the attraction towards the Lord is to hear about his pastimes, uh, which he performs, Tadrishi, uh, Krida, he performs the, accordingly the uh, pastimes which makes our heart 
inclined towards him. Tat para So, uh, Shankaracharya, while uh, uh, commenting in this verse, I looked in his uh, commentary on Bhagavad Gita. It's very interesting how he explained this verse because this verse is so clear. Janma karma chamedi vyama evam yaveti tatvata. Whoever understands the real nature of my birth and activities in this world, he will be liberated from this world. From this world, uh, if he really understands. So Shankaracharya very cleverly interprets this verse. He says, "Whoever understands that uh, the birth and activities of the Lord is all Maya, he will be liberated." <laughs> so. Uh, but uh, of course, this is uh, this is just a juggling of the words, uh, because even in the next uh, verse, Krishna says, "Vita raga vaya krata mam maya mam upasita bahavo gyana tapasa puta mad bhava magataha." The one who understands me in reality, uh, he achieves my bhava, love of me, puta mad bhava magataha. The real understanding, when Krishna stresses this point, evam yoveti tattvataha, whoever understands me in reality, the real understanding means to achieve love. After hearing again and again about the pastimes of the Lord, uh, uh, which are the pure manifestation of his love, uh, his love will be reflected in our heart. There is a beautiful verse in Brahma Samhita which explains this. Ananda chin maya rasa mataya manaksu. Ah, prani nam prati palam smaratam upetya. Lilaye te na bhuvanani jayate jasam govinda madipuru shantamaham bhajani. Which specifically deals with this uh, thing. He says, Ananda chin maya rasa mataya manaksu. If the Ananda chin maya rasa of Krishna, through the media of his lila, lila etena bhuvanani jayata jasam, will be reflected in the mind of uh, uh, human beings. Pratipalam, pratipalam means reflected. When this reflection takes place, how this reflection ta- takes place? Smaratam upetya. If we again and again remember about these pastimes, then the reflection will take place in, our, uh, in the quantum of our mind, and by this, Lilayatana Bhuvanani Jayata Jasam, by this, the uh, Jai, the victory of the Lord over the conditioned living entity will take place. The conditioned living entity, which is completely enslaved by the material nature, completely absorbed by the happenings of material nature, will gradually, gradually uh, turn uh, his consciousness towards the Lord. Because the Lord is Ananda Chinmaya Rasa. And when Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, uh, the um, Rasa Vaisaha, he is Rasa, indeed Rasa, he is indeed this bliss. When this Rasa, uh, Rasam, uh, he Evayam Labdva Anandi Bhavati, uh, one becomes blissful himself when this Rasa is reflected in us. When we think about the Lord, how his pastimes is taking place, then uh, this Ananda Chinmaya Rasa is reflected in our uh, consciousness and will overwhelm our consciousness with bliss. That's the whole idea. So, uh, and of course, understanding Lord's pastime is not to understand that it's all Maya, it's all illusion. (laughs) This is Maya. (laughs) The reality is that to understand how uh, this is the love, which is the highest reality, love of God manifest in this world while he's coming here. So I was thinking what to speak about Lord Ram. Uh, and uh, as Srila Prabhupada says about Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam is like a sweet bowl, you know, it's like a sugar bowl. Wherever you take it, it's all sweet. <laughs> but uh, what I ultimately thought of speaking about uh, Lord Trump comes here and he, as we know, is Mariada Purushottam. And Mariada Purushottam means that he shows us uh, the way how to purify our heart and instill love in our hearts through following the rules and regulations. 
After him, Lord Krishna uh, comes. And Lord Krishna comes and there's no rules. And the pastimes of Lord Krishna, there is absolutely no rules. Because there is love. Only love. No rules. But the problem, and uh, it's the highest, it's the pinnacle. There is nothing higher. There is nothing else need to be known. But nevertheless, uh, we will not be able to understand and even to appreciate this love which is there reflected in the pastimes of Lord Krishna, unless we purify our heart by following the rules. The problem is that uh, we can only understand the pastimes of Lord Krishna if we are nirmatsara. Nirmatsara means completely free from envy. If even a little spark of envy is there in our heart, uh, what will happen, uh, we will hear the pastimes of Lord Krishna, and we will envy him. We will become jealous, and uh, uh, the purification will not really take place, like Prabhupada says, so many people hear about Ras Lila, and they think, very nice pastime. Yes, I also want to perform Ras Lila. Very nice. <laughs> or they hear how Krishna stole the... Um, claws of Gopi, and they understand everything, yeah, I would do the same. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because there is this little spark, little contamination within our heart, and Lord Ram actually in his pastime shows how dangerous it is, and everyone has this, and therefore in the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Paramonir Matsaranam Satam, uh, he, he, you will get uh, the Lord within your heart by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, but only if one condition is in place. You should be completely free from envy. How to become free from envy? For this, uh, following the rules and regulations are there. Become more or less, uh, you know, there are three stages. Now we're the slaves of karma, the slave of our lust, desires. Then, you know, to change this, you have to become the slaves of rules and regulations. And then you will become the slave of love. <laughs> That's the highest position. In any case, you're a slave. <laughs> this cannot be changed. <laughs> you can never become Lord. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, the highest position is you become the slave of love. But there is an intermediate stage when you very strictly follow the rules and regulations so that uh, actually love will be contained within your heart. Otherwise, uh, it will not, y y your heart will not be able to contain love. It's not possible. So, in the pastimes of Lord Ram, uh, and that's actually exactly what uh, Krishna means when he says, evam yoveti tattvata. Tattvata means that if you know completely, absolutely, in truth, it means that you have not a, a speck of a doubt. And Lord Krishna himself says in the, uh, at the end of the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita that everyone has in the depths of our hearts some little doubt. And this doubt is the manifestation of envy. Like Prabhupada beautifully says, what the phrase Tattva Masi means. Tattva Masi means we come in front of the Lord and with full conviction we say, you are Him. <laughs> we come in front of Krishna or we come in front of Rama and we have no slightest doubt, you are the Supreme Lord. If this is there, then Evam Yoveti Tattvata by leaving this body, you will go to God. If there is even a little, 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 tiny, tiny speck of a doubt, then uh, it may not happen that soon. And therefore Krishna says at the end, this is the last verse of this fourth chapter, that uh, please take this sword of knowledge and cut this doubt which is there in the depths of your heart. So, 
Krishna knows we have this doubt uh, hidden, sometimes hidden even from ourselves. Sometimes we don't know this. And therefore that manifest and therefore this little spark which is uh, there can be ignited and ultimately can burn out our devotional service. So the whole story which I wanted to tell, the little, you know, the little story, actually the whole story which I will tell was mostly about uh, Bharat. How Bharata encountered uh, in, in his uh, spiritual journey, if you can say this about the incarnation of the Lord, uh, but still, you know, he's coming here to teach us how he encountered this and, uh, you know, anyway, let's, let's tell the story. It's a beautiful story uh, how, how it progresses. It's actually very interesting. Uh, we all know Ramayan. There is no need to repeat Ramayan. Uh, so I want to start uh, this little narration about Lord's pastimes and the lessons from Lord pastimes from uh, this evening when Maharaja Dasharat announced to uh, Ram that tomorrow morning he will be coronated. Uh, he called him and he said, it's an auspicious time and I'm a little restless. And I decide, I made up my mind, uh, you will have this uh, Abhishek tomorrow, royal Abhishek tomorrow. You will be coronated tomorrow. And Ram, of course, obediently, he uh, folded his hands and he said, I'm your servant, whatever you want, I will do. And the whole Ayodhya, very soon the whole Ayodhya become joyful in the news. But there is a very interesting uh, question here. Why Dasharat was in such a hurry? This whole arrangement is totally unexpected because Bharat is away, Shatrugna is away, Janaka Maharaj is far away, you know, if you want to have such a significant event as the coronation of Lord Ram, you at least have to invite his father-in-law for this. No, no invitation of father-in-law, nobody. And that's why Kaikei became a little suspicious. Actually, Mantara started feeding her suspicions. You know, why such a hurry? Why does he want to do it uh, in the absence of Bharata? Why Bharata is not here? There is definitely some, uh, some evil plan behind this. That's what Manhara will say. But the reason uh, was actually very interesting. The reason for this was that uh, Dasarat Maharaj always acutely remembered the curse which was uh, pronounced against him by the father of Shravan Kumar. And the problem of this case, the, the whole problem actually started there, and the problem started when Dasharat Maharaj never mentioned to anyone about this curse. It's amazing. This curse happened. He killed this little innocent boy, Shravan Kumar, and his father, be before leaving this world, he pronounced this curse. And he actually said, I'm cursing you because you committed such a grievous sin. And I'm cursing you only to relieve you from this sin. You, called an you, you killed an ascetic. And I'm, uh, I want to relieve you from this sin. And therefore, uh, I'm uh, pronouncing, uh, otherwise you will go to hell for this sin. So I'm pronouncing this curse to you now, and because, you know, so much pain is there in me, so I'm pronouncing this curse as I'm now dying because of separation with my son. You will also die uh, from the separation with your son. So uh, Maharaja Dasharat heard this uh, curse, and he never confined this curse to anyone. And this curse was inside him, 
actually one acharya commenting on this particular story he he gives a very important lesson to all of us he says that if you are in your spiritual journey you have to have at least one person with whom you can be completely open at least one person don't keep all these things within because that will create turmoil and that will create problem ultimately we'll have to get it out you know sometimes we are very closed especially in the spiritual society because we are little envious and so many people around us are little envious devotees are little envious <laughs> So we are kind of reserved. We don't want to say something, you know, bad about us or some problems which we have. We keep them inside. So Maharaj, Maharaj Dasharat, he kept this problem inside him. He didn't say to Vasishta Muni, who was his guru. He didn't say to Kaushalya, who was his wife. He didn't say to anyone, to Kaikeyi, to Sumitra. Uh, of course, Kaikeyi was not his wife at that time yet, but still, you know, he didn't say it to his father. Nobody knew this case. He only told it uh, uh, practically in the last day of his life, when uh, the separation took place, when he was about to die. Then only he opened his heart and he uh, told Kaushali about this curse. So what was happening with him, the anxiety was building up. And when you are in constant anxiety, when you are in constant fear, you will prone to do stupid things. You will do mistakes. So he started this coronation uh, in, in haste. Why? Because of this fear. He always thought, what will happen? What will happen? What will happen with me? How it, because he didn't know how, how the um, separation with his son will take place. Maybe my son will die as the son of uh, this ascetic, Shravan Kumar. Or maybe something else would happen. So this anxiety was the background of his existence. And he couldn't, you know, if he would confide this, if he would confess to somebody about this, uh, it would probably not affect his uh, consciousness so much. But because he was keeping it inside as a secret, uh, it, it was actually, uh, it was a mistake. So this mistake, uh, you know, from this mistake, another mistake happened. Because when this uh, um, spontaneous arrangement started and Manhara knew about this coronation, uh, Manhara heard that, you know, the whole city of Ayodhya is so happy and everyone is joyful and everyone is singing songs. She asked what, what's going, uh, what, what's happening? And somebody told her, you know, oh, don't you know, such good news. Ram tomorrow will become our king. And Manhara, she was envious. <laughs> so Maharaj Dasharat was not envious. But Mantara was definitely envious. What she thought, you know, she was a hunchback, uh, or how you say it, woman. And she was the nurse of Kaikei. And Kaikei loved her dearly. And Kaikei was the favorite queen of Maharaja Dasharat. And because of her privileged position in the palace, uh, she was protected from, you know, from the jokes of other maidservants and everyone because she was, she was special. And she thought, now I will lose my privileged position because if Ram becomes the king, what will happen to me? Kaushalya will become the mother queen and Kaikei will become nobody and I will become less than nobody. And we started raging in your heart, in her heart. And she decided, by all means, I will stop it. I will stop it. So she comes to Kaikei. Kaikei was sleeping at that time. And she wakes up Kaikei and she says, you stupid woman. Why are you sleeping now? Such a bad thing is happening. Your life is ruined. Stupid woman, get up, wake up. And Kaikei said, yo, what's happening? She said, tomorrow Ram is going to be coronated. 
Kaikiai became melated. She said, really, such a good news. She took her, you know, necklace from her neck and she gave it to Mantar and she said, for this good news, take this precious necklace. She was so happy. You know, it's, it's the best news. So nice. Jai, Haribo. <laughs> so Mantara, she took this necklace and this, she threw it on the floor. <laughs> and she said, you stupid lady, you don't understand anything. What? You know, Ram is, you know, when Ram will become uh, the king, what will happen with Bharata? Bharata is his rival. And Kaike said, Mandhara, don't joke with me. I know Ram. They're not, and I know Bharata. They're such a good friends. Bharata will be the happiest man in the world, you know. And you know, Kaike, please, don't, don't say these bad things, you know. And for, for some time it was going on and going on, but gradually, gradually she was poisoning her heart. Why she could poison her heart? Because there was little spark, little spark. If the spark was not there, she would not be able to do it. She would not be able to poison uh, the heart of Kaikei if little spark was not there. So for, for some time Kaikei was uh, arguing with her, but uh, then uh, Mantara found the weak spot. Mantara said, now you're the favorite queen. Now you are the main queen. And when Ram will be coronated, who will be the main queen? Koushalya will be the main queen. And who you will be? You will be the slave of Koushalya. You will be, you will be, uh, you will be lucky if you will be allowed to wash pots. You will probably wash toilets. <laughs> 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 she was <laughs> she was saying it again and again and again, you know. And what happened with Kaike in the beginning? She was she was not taking it seriously. Then she was listening and listening and listening, and then she started rehearsing it herself. And she started thinking about it more and more and more. And she said, "Yes, of course, definitely it will happen. For sure, it will happen." By all means, we should stop this arrangement. You, Mandhara, you're so nice. You're so good. You have such a good heart. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so what happened next? You know, she became completely convinced and uh, uh, she started rehearsing this and Mandhara, of course, gave her this best advice. You know, you ask, King Dasharat to put Rama in the throne, uh, Rama in the, you know, Bharata in the throne. But not only this, she said, oh, this is a good idea. But not only this, you have to banish Ram. She said, why, why, have, why do we have to banish Ram? Because when he's there, you know, he will, he will not tolerate it and he will overthrow Bharata. Go to, and she became completely convinced. She believed it. You know, it's amazing. Within just short time, her heart was completely turned upside down, even though she loved Ram like his own mother. She loved Ram more than Kaiki, more than Kaushalya. Actually, when uh, Mantara came to her, uh, uh, Kaiki and told this news, Kaiki told her, you know, I wish uh, next lifetime uh, Ram will become my son and Sita will become my daughter-in-law. <laughs> I hope, this is my aspiration, that if, if I lead a good life, Ram will come next time my son. But still, everything was turned. Why? Because there was little, little, tiny speck of doubt. And doubt and envy is the same, it's synonymous. Because doubt is envy of God. If we doubt in his supremacy, it's ultimately envy. It means that, you know, we are doubtful. <laughs> so, and then, uh, of course, mm. 
to make the long story short, what happens next, because I wanted to speak mostly about Bharata. Uh, when he came, uh, Maharaj Dasharatha died, and he, in the last moment of his life, he told Kaushalya, this is what happened. I was cursed and therefore I am dying out of separation with Ram. And he said, uh, his last words were, you know, all those people who will see Ram and Sita and Lakshman, when they come back from the forest, they're the most fortunate. I am the most unfortunate. I'm dying because of separation with him. And then they sent uh, the, you know, the, they sent envoys to uh, grandfather of Bharata, um, Bharata to, to this Kandagar, uh, to Afghanistan. <laughs> and they brought Bharata, and Bharata had some suspicion. Bharata had bad dream at that night, and he saw his father going in the south direction. Uh, adorned in red clothes. So he understood something bad happened. So he came very innocently and nobody's there, nobody greets him. And he comes to his mother. And listen, it's very interesting. He comes to his mother and he, his mother, Kaike, is very, she's very happy. She says, oh, you know, I have a good news for you. What is the good news? You know, you're the king now. He said, no, 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 wait, wait a second, wait a second. What happened? What happened? And she says to him that your father died. And how, how was he? He, he starts lamenting uh, like, like anything. His heart is broken. Uh, he's, uh, he's asking, you know, how did he die? And was it Ram who... Uh, performed the last rite for my father. Uh, where is he? I will go now to Ram and I will bow down to Ram and I, wa I will ask his blessings. Now he is the king. And Kaiki says, no, no, you don't understand. I have a good news for you. You are the king. Your father, before he died, he said, uh, let Bharata become the king. That's his order. And let Ram go to forest. Of course, your father told this, but, you know, somehow or other he died <laughs> because of separation with Ram and Sita. And uh, Ram is there in the forest. He's uh, clad in uh, bark of the trees. He's there. And, um, and for Bharata, it's blow. What is the most... Uh, he looks at his mother and he says, my dear mother, how could you think that I will do it? How, where did you get this idea that I will become king instead of Ram? Why do you think that I'm envious of Ram? He becomes, that, that's his pain. When, when we are envious, we project our envy towards others. And we start thinking that others are also envious. And Ram becomes, uh, Bharat becomes so pained because his mother could think about him like this. You're my mother. You're supposed to know my heart. Don't you know my love towards Ram? How you can say this? And Kaike, it, it just doesn't go inside her. Somehow or other, she doesn't understand what's going on. And he just, he curses Kaike. He says, I go to Kaushalya. And when he goes to Kaushalya, Kaushalya meets him. And Kaushalya, she's in white sari. She's emaciated. She's grieving. She's, she's, <laughs> she's crying. And she sees Bharata. She says, oh, prince. Oh, king, your plan is successful now. Now you will become king. Ram is successfully sent to forest. Why don't you send me to forest too? 
We will go together with Sumitra to the forest. We will be there with Ram. And she started accusing him. First, Kaikei thought that he was envious of Ram. Now Kaushali repeats this. <laughs> and he hears this. And he, he just he starts crying. He said, don't you know how I love Ram? How you can think like this about me? How you can think that I could be envious of Ram? And he starts saying, if somebody, if somebody thinks that I have to become the king instead of Ram, let him be in hell. And my mother will go to hell. That's my curse to her. If somebody says that I should become a competitor of Lord Ram, let him be in hell for eternity. I don't want to have anything to do with this. And Kaushali becomes pacified, you know. And then, you know, he, we know what happened next. He, uh, he, he says, Vasishta Muni comes and says, okay, my son, they, they perform the uh, cremation of Dasharat. Bharata performs the cremation of Dasharat. And then, you know, 14 days pass. And Vasishta says, okay, now it's time. Now you become the king. And everyone says, you become the king. All the citizens say, all the ministers of King Dasharat says, uh, this is the order of your father, you have to become the king. <laughs> and Bharat says, never. I will never become the king. I will go and I will get Ram back. Because not even in my wildest dream, I want to become the competitor of Lord Ram. And that's again the same point, because in my, in our heart, we are, because of this subtle envy which we have, we're kind of competing. We're competing with each other, but ultimately we're envious of God. <laughs> Once, uh, there is a little story about Prabhupada. He was in Los Angeles. And uh, he was... Uh, that was the peak of his glory. And he was with a group of his intimate disciples. Uh, and uh, he started saying, people glorifying me. People say, Prabhupada, this, that. He, he did this, he did that. He said, this is all nonsense. He said, I don't take credit for this. I have nothing to do with this. But he says, if somebody wants to give me some credit, there's one thing which, which should be given to me as a credit. He says, only one thing. Never in my life I was envious of, I was competing with God. <laughs> That's the only, the only thing which I have. And that's, I mean, that's a very strong statement. You know, because we have this, and Prabhupada, Prabhupada is saying, this is, this is the only quality which actually, which, which we should have, ultimately. So what happens next, uh, and this is amazing, you know, Bharata, he says, we'll go, we all go, the whole Ayodhya will go to Lord Trump. And we all bow down to him. We all pay obeisances to him. And we all, with tears in our eyes, will bring him back. We'll tell him, you come back. You're the ruler. You're the king. So the whole Ayodhya, they made the whole arrangement. They made the road, you know, the huge road to the forest. <laughs> For one month, they're doing this road so that uh, nine... In the army, there was 9,000 uh, 9, elephants only. <laughs> so elephants and all this cavalry and everyone, and uh, Koshali and Sumitra and everyone. You know, the whole road, Bharata goes barefoot. You know. He doesn't even want to take uh, his place in the chariot. He goes by foot. Because he says, I'm nobody, I don't want, 
you know, I, I don't want that anyone would even think that I, I'm a king. He goes barefoot uh, the whole way. And then they come to Ganga. And then Guha, the good friend of Lord Trump, sees this whole army. He sees this huge army which is going. And he says, for sure, Bharata is coming and he wants to kill Ram. <laughs> Why otherwise he's coming with this whole army? He only wants to kill Ram for sure. Let's, uh, he, he tells his warriors, let's fight with this, <laughs> with this Bharat. <laughs> now again, why does he say this? Because little envy is there. And therefore he projects this envy uh, to others. That's, that's terrible stuff. When we have this little envy in ourselves, we immediately start projecting it in our environment. <laughs> and we think others are envious, we, uh, others are jealous, others are this, and we easily believe this, easily believe this. So Guha, uh, he comes to uh, Bharat and he, was, was, you know, he tries to test him. And he says, you're a friend of my Lord, Ram, and therefore you're my friend, you come here. And uh, Bharat starts crying and saying, you're such a, good, such a good friend of my Lord Ram, and I'm coming to bring him back. And Guha becomes a little pacified. And Bharata, he, uh, he spends night with Guha, and he asks, what did my Lord do when he came to you? And Guha said, I prepared a huge feast for him. I wanted him to feast nicely. And uh, Lord Trump said, I'm banished to the forest. I'm not entitled to eat this. I will only eat what I will get myself. And I'm a kshatriya. I'm not supposed to take charity from anyone. So I will only drink some water. So he didn't eat anything. And he slept on the floor. He slept on, on the earth with Sita. And when Bharata hears this, because he doesn't have any envy, because he doesn't have any envy, immediately he says, from now on, I will only eat roots, which I will obtain myself. <laughs> and by, I will sleep on the floor. I will sleep on the, on the earth. I don't want uh, to have any privileges over Ram. If Ram leads this life, I will lead even more austere life than him. And he takes off his royal clothes and he puts bark of the tree. And he takes his beautiful hairs and he takes the sap of the tree and he makes matted hairs. And he said, from now on I, I'll do this. Because again, I, I do not want to have, I do not want to feed even a little bit. Uh, even, you know, I, I I don't want to compete with the Lord. <laughs> so, he, and he asked Guha next morning, uh, can you explain to me what Lord Ram did after he went from you? He said, he crossed the river, he crossed Ganga, and he went to Bharadvaja Muni. And uh, Bharat says, let's go to Bharadvaja Muni. And he takes all his army, and he goes to Bharadvaja Muni, and he comes to Bharadvaja Muni, and Bharadvaja Muni, uh, he gives his blessings to Bharat, and he says, Bharat, I hope you're not coming to kill Ram. Are you? <laughs> Bharadvaja Muni, Bharat is, it's as if, you know, he's just stabbed by a knife within his heart. First, his mother thinks that he is envious. Then Kaushalya thinks that he is envious. Then Guha thinks that he is envious. Then Bharadvaja Muni, the great yogi, thinks he is envious. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he comes and he starts crying. He starts saying, why are you saying this to me? How you can do this? And again, please listen very carefully. 
That's that's the problem. This whole story, this beautiful story in Ramayana is about us. Because, again, when we have this little envy within our heart, we will project it everywhere. We will see envy in everyone's heart. And we will misinterpret somebody's words. We will ascribe motivation which was not there. And we will make offenses. So he comes, uh, you know, and he says uh, to Bharadvaja Muni, I, I, I didn't have even remote, remote idea. I never wanted to do it. I, I don't want to do it. How you can think about me like this? I, I'm not a competitor of Lord Ram, and I will never become one. Uh, so Bharadvaja Muni says, okay, now I, if, it's, if it's true, I will show you the way. I will show where the Ram is hiding. So, and the Ram is sitting there in Chitrakut. Chitrakut means the mountain, which is very colorful. And they sing and they're enjoying this scene, this beautiful nature, the different colors of the stones when the, the sun is raising sun. And then all of a sudden, Ram sees the, you know, animals flocking together and running with great panic. And uh, he asks Lakshman, Lakshman, what's going on? Some commotion is there. Why all these elephants are running and all these deers are running? And what's going on there? And Lakshman, he climbs the tree and he sees the big army is coming. Huge army is coming. And he sees the flag of uh, uh, this insignia of Bharat. And Lakshman uh, comes down and he says, it's Bharat is coming and he wants to kill you. (laughs) 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 Now Lakshman is saying the same thing. (laughs) He comes to Ram and he says, we better be prepared. You hide, sit in a cave, take your bow and arrow, we will fight and Today, I will send this bird to hell, <laughs> where he belongs. <laughs> you know, he's coming to, to, because he probably wants to, uh, you know, establish his sovereignty and he doesn't want to have anything to do, you know. You're dangerous even in the forest, you know, and he's explaining this and he's telling this, you know, completely concocted story. For sure, this is going to happen, you know, let's, let's be prepared. And Ram looks at him and smiles. And he said, listen what he said to Bharat, to Lakshman. He said, Lakshman, I know Bharat. I know Bharat's heart. If you want, I can tell Bharat to give the throne to you and you will become the king and Bharat will stay with me. You will see it. He will give it throne to you. No problem. <laughs> so, when Lakshman hears this, he becomes a little ashamed. <laughs> he becomes he becomes little embarrassed. He understands that this is the way of Ram to to point out his problem. <laughs> he says the problem is not in Bharat. The problem is in you. You're trying to ascribe to him something which is, which is not there. He's pure. <laughs> so, and uh, Lakshmi becomes very ashamed, you know, and he, he says, okay. And it's, what is the most interesting, there is, a, there is a continuation of the story. The Acharyas, they explain that later, <clears throat> when... Uh, they went to Dandakaranya. They actually left Chitrakut because they realized that Chitrakut is too assess- accessible to the citizens of Ayodhya. Too easily they can come there and disturb them. Therefore, they went uh, deeper in the forest and went to the Dandakaranya forest. And ultimately, this whole story with the golden deer takes place. And uh, Sita, by her feminine tricks 
basically forces Ram to uh, go uh, to catch this deer. Because Ram knows that this is some trick, but Sita, you know, she knows how to manipulate <laughs> uh, man's heart. Uh, and Ram goes there and Lakshman is with Sita. And then they hear this cry. O Lakshman, O Sita, come, come, I'm dying. And uh, Sita tells Lakshman, you go, you go, immediately go. And Lakshman said, why should I go? Lord Trump told me to stay with you, I will stay with you. Nothing will happen with Trump. And she becomes furious and she says, I know, I know what is there in your heart. All these years, all these 13 years, you were with me and with Ram because you wanted to kill Ram to enjoy me. And actually, I think you were sent here by Bharat. <laughs> and the Acharyas, they say, why did Sita say such, such cruel words? Lakshman was, you know, can you imagine Lakshman was not sleeping for 14 years. He was not sleeping for one moment because at night he was serving Lord Ram uh, by guarding him and uh, during the day he was bringing food and he was building cottages and he was, you know, uh, killing all these wild animals, uh, animals which were there. You know, he was not sleeping for 14 years for one split second. He was only serving Lord Trump. His only joy was Lord Trump. He didn't even look, uh, you know, uh, at Sita, at, at the face of Sita. He was only looking at her feet. And after 14 years or 13 years of this service, what he hears, you were only here because you wanted to enjoy me. How he must have been hurt. But Acharyas say, why did it happen? Because he offended Bharat. Because he offended Bharat, now this is coming back to him. Because of this law of uh, justice. It's coming back to him because he, he thought bad about Bharat. He scribed some envious plans to, to Bharat. And what is it? Of course, Lakshman doesn't have envy in his heart. Sita doesn't have envy in her heart. What is it about? It's about us. How easily we believe that somebody has some envious nature. How easily we, uh, you know, go into this trap and start blaming some other people or ascribing some bad motives to other people. Did it happen with you sometimes? <laughs> you know, this, uh, uh, this is offense. And this offense, the reaction of this offense will come to us. The story is not ending here. What Ach how Acharyas explained, Acharyas explained, phew, this is even more dramatic than whatever I said before. Even more dramatic. What happens next, next, of course, this is the last words which Sita pronounces before she is kidnapped by Ravan. And, you know, for one year uh, she is being searched and uh, ultimately this whole great war is taking place and at the end of the war, uh, you know, Lakshman uh, is sent to bring Sita to Lord Trump and uh, Lord Ram is there and everyone is anticipating the happy meeting. And in front of everyone, Lord Ram says, well, now you're free to go anywhere. Oh dear Sita, I didn't come here to save you. I come to save the honor of my family. And you go to fire. Sita says, I, 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 I am ready to go to fire. Why? Acharyas explained. Why this whole Agni Pariksha is there? 
the reason is that Sita had to experience the same what Lakshman was experienced while she was saying these cruel words to him. Because when she said these cruel words to him, the fire was there in his heart. <laughs> when we hear cruel words of other people, especially if these people are close to us, especially if they're devotees, it's so painful. It's a, it's a fire within our heart. So Acharya says that even Sita had to go this. Ram is doing this just to, you know, to establish the balance, to restore the balance. <laughs> so again, for what is it there to show us how careful we have to be? How careful we have to be while dealing with other people, how sensitive other people can be, and how, you know, delicate other people's you know, heart are, because it's so easy to offend somebody, and it's so difficult to get out this pain from our heart. You know, people remember this. There may be 20, 30, 40 years. <laughs> the pain is there the pain of some cruel words. It says in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, that, you know, there is, arrows can pierce your heart, but it's not so painful. But if the cruel words of other people are piercing your heart, this is the real pain. Because when the arrows pierce your heart, how long the pain will last? You know, one, two days, three days, oh, maybe you will die, okay, no problem. <laughs> so, but if the cruel words pierce your heart, how long you will experience the pain? Maybe the whole life, especially when somebody who is close to you is doing this to you, especially if you, if you have this uh, you know, if, if you didn't have anything like this in your heart. And of course, I wanted to say a little, little more, little, one little short story uh, more about this. Uh, to show, again, to show purity of Bharata. This whole story is to show how, how cruel people are, by uh, ascribing, you know, wrong motivations sometimes or ascribing some fault where, where there is no fault and how we have to take this also. Not only this, the, the second part of the story is that uh, we should, despite of this, we should never be discouraged. Yes, this will happen. We are living in a cruel world we are living in a world where everyone has at least a little bit, you know, a little bit of envy uh, in his heart. And therefore, we will definitely encounter this in our life. It's practically inevitable. And because we do it to others, it will come back to us. And when it will come back to us, don't say that others are bad. You know, <laughs> it's coming back because, because it's your own letter which you send to yourself. It came after some time. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> it's your own. <laughs> so uh, we definitely have to be very, you know, aware. And we should never lose uh, our enthusiasm. And uh, Bharat is, is a glorious example of this. You know, how many times... Uh, he, he, he encountered this. How many times he met with all this misunderstanding and, and these things. And uh, actually, at one point when uh, Sita, Ram and Lakshman were in this Nandakaranya forest, what happened, uh, it was very cold season, the Himanta season. The weather was very cold. And uh, Ram uh, and Sita went to a river to um, uh, Mandakini, to Godavari River, which was flowing there. And it was really cold, really cold. And they came out, and Lakshman 
uh, as usually he was guarding them while they were taking baths. And when they came out and they started shivering, uh, Laxman uh, said to them, I'm looking at you and I see how you're cold, but while looking at you and seeing how you're cold and shivering, I'm remembering about Bharat. Because Bharat, he is in Ayodhya. And uh, Ayodhya is much more to the north. And it's much colder. And Bharat, every day, he gets up two hours before Brahma Muhurta. And he takes, uh, takes bus in the river at that time. And when somebody asks him, why are you taking bus so early? Because it's, it's so cold and you're taking bus so early. How is this? Uh, he says, first of all, I don't feel the cold because my body is so heated because of the separation with Lord Trump. I don't feel the cold. But the main reason why I'm taking bus so early because I'm such an inauspicious person. Because of me, was Ra Lord Ram was banished to the forest. And if somebody sees me first thing in the morning, then his whole day will be ruined. Therefore, I make sure that nobody sees me first time in the morning. <laughs> and nobody is there. <laughs> I don't want that somebody sees my face. <laughs> Uh, you know, early in the morning. Therefore, I'm taking this bus. And uh, Laxman starts saying, you know, he, he never enters Ayodhya. He always stays in this little village. And, uh, you know, he, every day he comes back to this hut and he reports to your shoes about the events of the day. Your shoes are ruling Ayodhya and he reports humbly to your shoes and in the meantime, he four times he enlarged the, the kingdom of Ayodhya. He's ruling so perfectly, but he never considers himself a ruler. And then uh, because you're not eating cooked food, he's not eating cooked food either. He's only eating cow urine and raw barley. He's, uh, he's on raw diet. <laughs> so <laughs> he's only eating... Uh, raw barley uh, soaked in cow urine. You can try it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Shastras say, if you, you are for 10 days on this diet, all the sins will be removed from your body. So you may, <laughs> may try it. Simple diet, cow urine. <laughs> so so Lakshman says, <laughs> Lakshman says, he glorifies Lord Bharat uh, for, for his, his austerity. And he says that um, because he knows that you are sleeping uh, in the earth, uh, he's also sleeping in the earth, but he doesn't want to sleep on the same level where you sleep. Therefore, he dug a hole, you know, the two meters deep hole in the earth and he sleeps in this hole because he doesn't want to sleep on the same level where you sleep. And he sleeps in this cold hole <laughs> every night. <laughs> Again, because he doesn't, want, he doesn't want to compete with you. He doesn't want to have anything better than you have. <laughs> so, uh, this is what it is. I wanted to, you know, to, to bring tonight these few little lessons from, actually big lessons, from these little stories of Mahabharata, how we are in a hurry to ascribe uh, to others. And actually, that's interesting. Uh, one little more addition to this story, to the last story. And, Bharat, uh, you know, Lakshman, he glorifies Bharat and he says, I cannot understand. Usually people say that the son uh, imbibes the quality of uh, his mother. And I cannot understand how uh, somebody, uh, somebody so envious and uh, vicious can have such a good son as Bharat. He didn't even, you know, uh, call the name of Kaikeya. 
said, I, I cannot understand how somebody, and Lord Trump looked at him and he said, you should never say this. He said, why do you have to denigrate somebody or to put down somebody? You're free to glorify. Why are you spoiling all your speech? You're glorifying Trump so, Bharat so nicely. Why are you spoiling everything by making this bad remark about Kaiki? She's my mother. She's respectful. She's respectable. I, I mean, I, 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 I... Why are you saying this? He, he chastised him severely. I love her. She's my mother. She will always be my mother. She's suffering so much. Don't say this. Never say this. <laughs> so this is all lessons for us. You know, how sometimes we become envious of somebody, how quickly we offend somebody, how we can, you know, overwhelmed by some emotions, do something stupid. <laughs> and, uh, and the reactions will come. If reactions came to Sita, <laughs> if reaction came to Lakshman, what to speak about us? The only hope is to eat this barley soaked in cow <laughs> 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 <How> urine. <laughs> But even this may not help. <laughs> you know, we still have to, to experience this. How, how careful we should be. <laughs> because, again, we have to guard against this. The envy is there and it's in our heart. And it may manifest in many different ways. We have to be so careful about this. And so respectful. The, the, the Ram is showing us this example, you know. So respectful to anyone who is elderly or who is senior or who is, you know, or whoever. In fact, whoever. Then only something will happen. <laughs> then only the transformation of our heart will happen. Then only, you know, then only we will understand pastimes of Lord Krishna. We are lucky if we understand the lessons of Lord Ram. And, uh, you know, for that, uh, and the main lesson is to very, you know, very diligently follow discipline, mariada. Don't say bad about others. Don't disrespect others. Don't judge others according to your projections. Don't do this. If you want to glorify, glorify other people. No problem with this. But uh, that's mariada. And if this mariada is followed, then the heart becomes transparent. And in this transparent heart, uh, by this transparent heart, we will be able to understand Bhagavatam. Otherwise, we will not understand Bhagavatam. Because we will only hear, or when we hear about the pastimes of Lord Krishna, why pastimes of Lord Krishna is so difficult to understand, so difficult to derive bliss from these pastimes. Because of our envious heart. Because we're hearing them through our past samskaras, which are there. Not by pure heart. And therefore, this discipline uh, is so important. The discipline uh, preliminarily purify our heart and make it uh, possible to, for us to understand the pastimes of Lord Krishna and uh, get rid of our problems and then Tyakta Deham Punar Janma Naitima Maiti Sorjuna. That's what it means to understand God Tatvataha <laughs> in reality, to understand God as He is. For that we should uh, be completely free from this tendency which is unfortunately there in us. Uh, this tendency to compete with the Lord or to be envious of Him or his devotees, or he, whatever, it, whatever it may manifest, it may manifest in many different ways. So anyway, that was my little, little. <laughs> yes, doctor. Just, I wanted to make one short comment. Yes, please, question. please. I think you probably answered my question, but maybe you could expand them a little. The, the comment is. 
the Prabhupada often cited this uh, aphorism, Atmaman Manyutej. Yeah. That we think that others think the way we yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we experience it all the time. Yeah. And you mentioned in your lecture about how sometimes piercing words of other people sometimes stay with us even possibly a lifetime or yeah. at least many years. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to um, sometimes overcome that. So could mm -hmm. you comment a little bit more on how to overcome those, I guess, those resentments or those mm -hmm. harboring of those mm -hmm. feelings? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I started this little explanation from this past time that Dasharat Maharaj never spoke out, never revealed his heart. And this, uh, this was eating him up from inside. So the same mistake we tend to do. We somehow or other keep all this thing inside instead of speaking them out and revealing uh, the heart and freeing the heart. And actually, when this father of uh, Shravan Kumar was cursing him, he said two reasons why he's cursing. One reason I, uh, I said, I mentioned that I'm cursing you to free you from the sin, grievous sin. And another reason is that I want to get rid of this grief which is there. <laughs> I want to vent this negative thing which is there, you know, therefore I, I have to do it. So uh, there is a way to do it properly without offending others. We have to speak out, we have to reveal our heart, but at the same time it's an art because the tendency will be there when, when something is painful in our heart we will start blaming others and, you know, we will commit offense and we will only, you know, make yeah, make it worse. Instead of uh, making it better, we will, we will make it worse. It's like this, usually, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, anyway, that's, that's the dynamic of family life. Men and women come together and they are in love with each other and they want to do this, but because they are not sensitive, they are, you know, they are hurting others' feelings. And for, for the time being, they are, you know, keeping it inside, 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 but then the negativity becomes too much and it comes out. Out of blue, sometimes people think, you know, how, you know, how it is, but it was... It was there for some time, and then it becomes even worse, because they're hurting even more and more and more. That's how it goes. So the, the art of doing this uh, properly is to speak out, not by ascribing some motivation to other person, not to saying you are bad or whatever, not to call names, but to say, uh, I'd ask question, Prabhupada actually once said, if you want to point somebody's fault or uh, to, to say something uh, and at the same time not to offend, you ask a question. You not make a statement. You may ask, you know, why did you say this? Can you explain to me? And you should be at the same time open to get the feedback, you know, why, why it was said. But uh, that's a very kind of safe way to do this, uh, asking questions. Uh, or sometimes you may just just say that this is what I felt, you know, that, not to say that you are bad, or, but to express your own feelings, which is important, to just, just to say what, what I feel. And that's also not offensive. You know, this is how I feel. This is not offense. This is how I was hurt. This is what it is. So we have to speak out, but we also have to speak out in a proper way so that it's not, doesn't aggravate the situation. Just one follow-up. Yeah. So sometimes even in that revealing process, and even if it's done properly... Somebody may be hurt. Pain. 
the feeling may yeah. still remain. May remain. Go to psychotherapist. Go <laughs> <laughs> to your temple president, which is almost the same. <laughs> <laughs> on the same subject um, uh, I've, I've noticed I mean I've also probably done it um, when, when we have something going on in our life is it wise to keep it to ourselves and to our closer friends closest friends um, then just going around and Trumpeting. Yes. yes. Which, which, which way is better, actually? Yeah, we have to express it, but we have to express it with discretion. Because when we start expressing it everywhere, it's also not a solution. <laughs> you know, therefore, you know, it's said you have to have a close circle of people with whom you can express yourself and relieve yourself from all these problems which are there. Mm. Isn't that a kind of an uh, assumption that I won't tell anybody because I think they'll be and they'll harm me as a result of knowing that information? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. And there is something in this assumption. <laughs> you know, when we live in this material world, we have to be a little careful. We don't have to be silly. Uh, therefore, there has to be trusted people with whom we can be completely open. With other people, we don't necessarily have to be foolishly open. Uh, you know, because, yes, unfortunately, we are living in this world, and in this world, we do meet with people who... I don't remember, but maybe somebody remembers this famous... Uh, famous poem of uh, Kipling, if uh, there is this beautiful s line there that be ready that the fools will completely misinterpret your words and uh, will turn your words against you. That's there <laughs> in, this, uh, in this poem. Uh, people are like this. Uh, he says, be ready for this. Your words will be taken by unscrupulous people and will be turned against you. That's, that's the reality. <laughs> so this is on the other side. We may have hurt someone. Speak louder. It's like we may have hurt someone uh -huh. and we want to beg forgiveness. Uh -huh. But that person may not even exist. Right? In the sense, uh, they passed away. Mm. And we have, with that guilt inside, then it's very difficult to open up. Mm. How do we resolve that? Yeah, that's unfortunate that, you know, sometimes we don't, uh, don't have a possibility to beg forgiveness from a person. Still, we, we can repent and we can, you know, tell somebody about this and confide and get relief by by explaining it to others and with, with remorseful heart. The main thing is that uh, sincerely we should be remorseful, but we should not accumulate the guilt again. The guilt is also very, the guilt feeling, it's actually, uh, guilt feeling is a fear, fear of consequences. <laughs> so we have to, Repent and not repeat it again, uh, but not harbor this guilt inside. This is also not not conducive for our spiritual life because guilt is a, uh, taking our you know sinking our consciousness puts it down. You know. If we're always in this guilt feeling, all these emotions they make us self-centered. Guilt feeling uh, forces us to think about ourselves only. <laughs> Whereas the whole idea of spiritual life is to think about others and ultimately think about Krishna. Man manabha, man bhakto. 
The whole idea of spiritual life is this. But when you're absorbed in these negative emotions, uh, you only think, you, you're only capable of thinking about yourself. Mm. So get it out and forget about it. I, I mean, forget it about it in a proper way. You know, be remorseful, but uh, not, not leave, uh, not feed yourself always with this. So that's the proper way. Yes, uh, One thing that, that seems to come from this, when you said it was sending a letter back to me, <laughs> that's, that's really happening. Um, I see the verses in chapter 6, 26 to 32, uh, where Krishna says, observe me in everything. And, and uh, he says, uh, and then it, which uh, there's a verse that sort of summarizes it. For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me. I'm never he's lost. lost and he's never he's lost, lost in me. me. Yeah. And it seems that somehow Krishna's showing us what's in me. Yeah. And that it's all coming from Krishna. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's pointing out that uh, we're the source of our, our, uh, our difficulties. But if we keep seeing that Krishna's telling me that, Everything's coming from Krishna, not that person, but it's coming from Krishna. It's an actual personal letter. It's sort of like that. Yeah, if you are capable of doing this, then you're safe. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. That's true. Ultimately, this is what we have to learn, that it's all coming from Krishna. Because this whole, our life is a learning experience. And, and actually we learn more when something wrong is happening with us than something good is happening with us. So the bad lessons, quote unquote bad lessons are good lessons. And the good lessons, quote unquote, are not so good lessons. <laughs> The only reason I said it because when my marriage split up, it seemed like my wife was at fault. But when I found that actually the faults that she left me for were actually in me and that I shouldn't be surprised, actually then I felt this thing that actually I was the problem. But I didn't see what was causing it. Uh, the effect of such a, a difficult separation uh, in my own life. There was a story when somebody came to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, I have a problem. Prabhupada looked at him and said, you don't have a problem, you are a problem. <laughs> there, there's another story where where someone was lamenting like anything and probably get patting them in the head and say, you have no problems. <laughs> Which that's a harder one to uh, understand sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, sometimes we have a, a skeptic mentality like, um, yes, I have this problem, this weakness of the heart and so many things. But I will just chant, everything will go away. Is, is that escapism uh, rather than resolving it in a positive? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, sometimes we are, you know, Prabhupada, he said quite often that everything will come automatically. And sometimes we are relying too much on this automatic uh, thing that it will come automatically. But we have to understand what it means to come automatically. You know, when, when we chant Hare Krishna, uh, you know, the problems are being revealed to us which, which we don't know. If we wouldn't chant, we wouldn't even know that this problem exists in us. But because we are chanting, 
uh, Krishna is showing by different means, by events of our life, or even by our own introspection, we see the problem. And then, you know, we really have to, at that moment when we see the problem, we have to have the desire to get rid of the problem. If we say, okay, 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 no problem, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, I will go on. You will go on, and the problem will also go, the, 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 will go on. You know, the desire to get rid of it should be there because the, the main problem is not the problem. The main problem is that we don't want to get rid of the problem. There is this beautiful story from the Saint, uh, Christian Saint Augustine's life. He, was, he, he wrote this confession and he said, when I was a young man, I was praying to God, my dear Lord, please take away my lust, but not now. <laughs> So, in the same way, we are praying to the Lord, please take away the... But not now. Not now. I still need it for the time being. <laughs> so, uh, the main problem is not that we have problem, but, the, you know, the problem will be taken by the Lord. The main problem is that we hold for the problem. We don't want to, you know, to uh, get rid of it. So when we see the problem, and, and then we say, okay, okay, I will chant Hare Krishna, it will disappear. No, that's not the proper mentality. The proper mentality, the desire to get rid of it should be there. You know, I, you know, I, I, I want to be free from this. I don't want to. Otherwise, we say, okay, okay, now, okay, no problem, you know, it's, it's a little problem, you know. I will chant Hare Krishna a little more, and... I will exercise this problem a little more. <laughs> Let's see. Because all our problems are also give us some benefits. The main problem is that all our problems are some uh, adoptive mechanism of adaptation to this world. Envy is very good. How we can live without envy? Anger is very good. Lust is fantastic. <laughs> How can we can live without lust? Greed is beautiful. <laughs> so, we don't, even when we see it in, in us, and then if we are just kind of saying, you know, everything will go on automatically, you know, yeah, it may go on automatically for 800 lifetimes or more. <laughs> So therefore, the desire should be there. I want to achieve love of God, and uh, love of God is con can only be achieved if the heart is pure. <laughs> There's no, uh, it, it's not compatible. Uh, you know this beautiful verse of Raghunath Das Goswami in his Manak Manak Shiksha Pratishtasha Drishtasva Pachara Mani Mehridi. Uh, not that. Uh, katham uh, sadhu prema sprishati. Uh, you know, he says, how the pure prema, prema is pure, love is pure, sadhu prema, uh, will enter my heart if this uh, uh, unchaste woman of pride, uh, prostitute, uh, the obnoxious prostitute, drishtaramani, <laughs> Pratishtasha uh, drishta svapachara mani. She's eating the flesh of dog eating woman, prostitute, is, is dancing in my heart. And that's envy, you know, the pratishta, the desire to be special. It, it's envy, it's the same thing. And he says, katham sadhu prema sprishati. You know, it, it's not possible. They are not compatible, you know. If there is some uh, uh, not very clean prostitute is living there, why pure prema entered the same place? <laughs> so, therefore, mariyada is, is necessary. Therefore, discipline is necessary. And we follow the rules. Initially, uh, it's very difficult, you know, to follow the rules spontaneously. When, you are, when your heart is clean, then you follow the rules spontaneously. Initially, you have to follow the rules because, as I said, you, you should become the slave of the rules. 
of course, with understanding that this is not the highest. <laughs> but ultimately, yes. I was just thinking about the negative emotions. When we have the hurt and everything, you said you can go and reveal it to somebody. Mm-hmm. So the person who is on the receiving end of the negative emotions, if you are in a position where you are constantly hearing the negative emotions, then it will get affected. But if you have somebody to reveal these negative emotions which are revealed to you, then, then you are still safe. <laughs> Uh, no, you don't have to say the details to somebody else. You can just say that I, I got this beautiful meal of negative emotions today <laughs> and I want to share it with you. <laughs> you don't have to get into details. 